measures that are set by some governmental agency or external authority that require that the price of a product not fall too far because it would harm the sellers or producers or manufacturers of that product. As we did before, let's talk about milk as an example. And let's suppose we have a market where milk is selling for $3 a gallon, and the equilibrium quantity of milk sold per day is 1,000 gallons per store per day. And now, some external authority, the government or whoever comes in and says, $3 for a gallon of milk will put the dairy farmers out of business. They're not making enough money to remain profitable and remain in business, and that could threaten the supply of milk for the country. And that would be a disaster. What we need is a system that makes sure that the sellers of milk get a higher price so they can stay in business. And so they pass a law and they say the minimum price for milk is now set at $5. The lowest price you're allowed to charge for milk is $5 per gallon. This then minimum price is a price floor. Price cannot go below the floor. When the price floor is put in a market above the equilibrium price, we have problems. Let's take a look. First problem, when the price of milk is moved up from $3 to $5, how do the buyers of milk behave? Well, with a higher price, they don't buy as much. That's the law of demand, right? As price rises, the quantity demanded decreases. And so now, reading up the demand curve, we say at $5 instead of 1,000 gallons a day, buyers only want to buy 600 gallons. But what about the sellers? Well, now maybe we observe that seeing higher prices for milk, the milk producers produce more milk. That's the law of supply. As the price rises, they offer more for sale. And so as we read from this price over to the, new, to the supply curve, here's where we are, and this then represents the quantity supply. Let's call that 1,500 gallons. That's the quantity supply. 600 is the quantity demanded. What's going on in this market? We've got more for sale than people are willing to buy at that price. We have a surplus. And in fact, the surplus is 900 gallons of milk per day per store. So this was supposed to help the producers of milk, the dairy farmers, but did it. In fact, it resulted in a significant decrease in their sales, and for some of them, a tremendous increase, an overproduction of milk that there's no market for. And so what do they do with the milk? Pour it out on the ground? What do they do with their dairy herd? It costs money to feed those dairy cows, and they can't make you enough money to support, so now we start slaughtering the dairy herd. And what have we got in six months or a year down the road? We may not have enough dairy herd to produce enough milk for the needs of the country. So once again, when, when authority units step in, government, and they start setting prices that are inconsistent with the market, we get distortions. When you have a price floor above equilibrium, you wind up with a surplus. The surplus means we produce a lot of product that's wasted, that there's no market for it. Or we create a black market and we sell it on the side for, I don't know, $4, $3, $2 a gallon. Okay? But that's not very efficient either. So bottom line is price floors and price ceilings intended to help sellers or buyers typically do more harm than good. Probably not a good idea. All right? This was the price floor. Review the price ceiling. Make sure you're ready to deal with it. Good.